In this video, uh, we're going to go over how to do topography. So in order to do this, you have to make sure that you are, go under floor plans and make sure you double click on site. If you are on level one, I'll show you what happens. But in order to get to your topography, um, typically you'll be here in architecture, you're going to click on massing and site and then go to typo surface. So right now I was on level one. When I clicked on that, you can see here Topographic elements are not visible in the current view. Uh, you can modify view range settings and then a couple little bit more information there. So basically what it's saying is you're not going to be able to see what you're drawing because you're not on site. So I'm going to hit X, double click on site, and then click on typo surface. So from here, um, we have our sketching uh, tools up here. So we have our confirm, cancel, place point, which you'll be familiar with, and these right here, you don't have to worry about too much. So up here, we have elevation. This is where you're going to change the elevation of which your particular points are at of your, um, of your site, of your topography. Uh, here where it says absolute elevation, this is just referencing to the elevation being above sea level. So for example, if you were doing a particular site, and let's say it was in Texas, your elevation would be slightly lower than other states because the elevation above sea level is less. But for our class example, we will set the lowest point of your elevation at zero. So what we do is we'll go ahead to your workspace and I'm gonna left click one time, click again, and then what I'm doing is creating the border of my site. I click again and you can see these lines appear. This is just showing um, contours. So basically where your um, your site, your topography is going to be. And I'm going to finish it off here with a square. So if I hit escape twice, what this allows you to do is select points individually. And when you click points individually, you will see that the window slightly changes and it says boundary point and you can change this elevation. So if I click and drag, I'm going to highlight these top two change it to three feet, and you will see these two new lines pop up. These are just contour lines showing you that there's an elevation change between these two points. Because if those were not there, you could only assume that they're all even as far as elevation goes. So in order to add new points, so I'm going to click on place point, and I'm going to change the elevation, let's say, to one foot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create like a nice little curve here. So I'm going to start here, click, and go like that. So as you can see, this is the curve that I wanted, but this contour line skips all of these points for some reason. So unfortunately in Revit, sometimes it will do that, and the only way to fix that is you're going to create new points, but instead of it being at one foot, exactly you're going to change it to let's say one foot one inch so you want the new elevation to be just slightly above what the other points are and then you will click in the middle of the arc so when I do that it should hopefully fill in the arc you might have to click a couple times depending on how sharp of an angle or curve it may be but that's just the easiest way to fix that problem so I'm going to go ahead and add in just a couple more, so two feet, I'm going to do a small elevation there, and then hit green check mark. So I'm going to go into my 3D view, and you can see if you go to the right view, we have an elevation change, because we have zero here, and up here is three feet, and if we turn it, we can see all the different points that we made as far as the elevation goes. So there's one other thing that I want to show you and that is called a building pad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on building pad and what this is used for is if you have a building. So let's say you want a part of your the ground of your topography taken out. So I'm going to select the rectangle and let's say I wanted my house to be right here. So I would draw in whatever shape you want it to be. I'm going to click and then over here in our properties we have an option pad one is the only option and then height offset I'll show you that after it's finished but let's say that's what I want I hit the green check mark I'll go into my 3d view 
and what it does is it creates an opening gets rid of all the ground so you could create a building here without having the ground flowing through your structure so as far as if I click on to the site pad if I change the offset height so let's say your elevation was very large as far as the difference goes and for some reason let's say you needed to lift the the pad up you would just change the offset height so let's say if I wanted to change it to one foot enter you can see now that my building pad has lifted up so that way in most cases the building pad should be at the lowest level um, before the ground consumes it so let's say if I change this to two feet clearly I have a problem because now my site pad is higher than my ground and I sh probably will run into some issues as far as it being too tall so it all depends on your situation but I'm going to change it back to one foot and I am happy with that. So in this video, basically all we did was cover your type of surface, how to create your, your site, um, and then using the building pad. So if you have a building or if you want to try to take out a certain area, uh, you can use that.